Namaste and welcome to the Essence of Knowledge weekly meeting. Essence of Knowledge is a complete online and free program for the seekers of the path of knowledge. We are conducting these me- weekly meetings as a part of the program. Here I try to answer your questions. I try to clear your doubts and provide some guidance for abidance practices and purification etc which are the steps of this essence of knowledge program and we conduct exams tests in this online meeting those who want to participate in the program they can register for this program on gyanmarg.guru anytime all are most welcome it is completely free and completely online service so those who have any questions any doubts they are most welcome to ask their questions well i do have a question um my name is dildar um good morning good evening i'm in the central time zone in the united states um so it's the morning time here um my qu- i do have a couple of questions like i said i've been reviewing the materials on step 2 going through the the videos and um there is some emphasis on the terminology um some terms are a little bit confusing to me or maybe i misunderstand them and one of them is um i guess there are three terms one is zero and um the other is emptiness and the third is nothing and uh i've been trying to discriminate between these three terms and uh, trying to research trying to understand these um any guidance uh, on these would be really beneficial so that's my first question and the second question is in the exam uh are the questions um given ahead of time or are they just extempore thank you in the exam you will be given 10 questions and uh, they are given at the same time uh, at the time of exam we don't give advanced questions like one day ahead or one week ahead it is just like any other exam where the questions are revealed at the time of answering and you are given sufficient time to think about it there is uh, no uh, minimum time limit and now uh, your first question about the meaning of emptiness zero nothingness the exact word is emptiness while zero nothing are uh, you can say common language sometimes we use that language poetic language just to introduce a little bit of variety in the talk but the correct word is emptiness and emptiness means the nature of the existence it means existence is not a physical thing it its foundation its substrate its nature is not physical and it is not mental so then what is it it is unknowable why it is unknowable because our senses our minds they can grasp only the physical or mental no other direct experience can be obtained so we are forced to say that whatever there is is completely empty the sanskrit word for emptiness is shunyata and uh, sometimes it is roughly translated into zero because shunya also means zero in the mathematics but uh, this emptiness is not really nothing although the mind will say it is nothing there is nothing there it is no matter no thoughts nothing physical nothing non physical nothing metaphysical so in ordinary language the mind will say there is nothing the source of the existence the substrate of the existence the nature of the existence is nothing but still there is an experience and still there is an ability to experience it which is called the experiencer so how can it be nothing so the word nothing needs to be redefined now and instead of redefining it we simply use the correct word 
which is emptiness it is empty of matter empty of anything at all and that emptiness is appearing to itself and therefore it is not really nothing it is not zero it is everything it is infinite potential to appear although whatever appears is completely empty of any content nothing remains when the experiences happen one event happens and then it goes away there is impermanence here in the whatever is happening whatever is appearing that is impermanent and when it goes away it leaves nothing behind it was not made up of anything so this is the meaning of emptiness and the emptiness is a negative word it is trying to show us that do not assume that there is something which the senses can grasp or the mind can grasp and so this is symbolized by the word empty or zero or nothing ultimately in the context of path of knowledge they all mean same even if you say unknown unknowable it also means same so hopefully that clears the question well i do have some follow up but i think i should uh wait to hear from everyone else um i think this is going to be an ongoing learning experience for me i will contemplate on this and then hopefully i can see it uh with my own understanding thank you okay any more questions well it sounds like um there is an opportunity here to ask more questions i will go back to my previous question um and try to to see how the word nothing and you know this this may be a just language it may just be the limitation of the language but it's possible to make a statement that says what happens when emptiness is realized and i am assuming that the answer is nothing happens right so we can also say something like nothing happens when emptiness is realized so in this statement it seems like there is some distinction or maybe this is just word play um i i think that um i understand and perhaps even have some glimpse of of the emptiness maybe i'm just lost in the language here it is very easy whatever is appearing right now and to whatever it is appearing is emptiness that is what happens that is what is happening eternally timelessly there is nothing more in emptiness this present moment is completely fully manifested emptiness and it it will always be like this it was always like this and this is eternal the word emptiness means do not ask now do not ask anything about it because whatever will be answered will be wrong whatever notions will be made about it the present moment that is right now right here as it is those all assumptions will be wrong the message of this word is be empty be empty fully knowing what it is so the answer is silence if you say something about it it is probably arising from the ignorance about emptiness there should be like this something will happen something will come out of it something will be realized what is happening these are thoughts that are coming out of not knowing that the present moment is whole and complete and empty so it is okay if they arise but then uh, come back in knowledge that there is nothing to know in emptiness it is simply being what it is why is there experience silence why i am experiencing this what is realized here silence that means everything that can be known is known it is all negative knowledge now do not ask yes if there is ignorance there will be questions and now the answers will be all negative what is the meaning of happening 
and immediately it is seen that it is meaningless it is being nothing is happening it's simply being which one of it is real immediately it is seen real and real are creations of the mind they are also thoughts these thoughts are also appearing in the emptiness do not ask so we call this the level of non duality where only silence comes out to be the answer not words not concepts there is no nothing to experience also some people can say let me experience the emptiness directly show me the emptiness it is already here whatever this present moment is is whole and complete emptiness after this sentence nothing is asked nothing is known nothing needs to be known this is final so this is the level of non duality yes you can leave this level of emptiness non duality and arrive in duality here for the benefit of the mind and intellect we divide the emptiness into two that which is appearing will be called experience to which it is appearing will be called the experiencer and here also the knowledge is always negative but there can be words it can be expressed in words we know uh, the silence is not needed here or the silence will not help here so a lot can be said about the experiencer and it will be all be negative it simply establishes the student back into emptiness because there is nothing more to think after that we have done all this thing in the uh, analysis in the program the basic analysis and the advanced analysis that uh, clears the mind completely of any question but if it remains then we have this kind of meetings for that to clear that and then the next part is the experience where there is an infinite amount to know you can know it there can be positive sentences there but uh, it is all false the whole book can be written about uh, experience and uh, the title of the book is false illusion so we call it uh, knowledge of the illusion to completely negate it so that you don't assume that whatever you are knowing about the experience is true do not assume this so we have called it illusion instead of calling it uh, something else so at the level of illusion there are different kinds of experiences now the emptiness has become manifested here something can be said about it and then we divide the illusion again in various kinds the experience of world or objects the experience of the body the experience of the mind and then we say that it is a relative truth that these things exist and now the relative knowledge starts the whole world starts the worldly knowledge begins here so the uh, path of knowledge is backwards it will take you back to the emptiness from wherever you are silence is the final answer and uh, it means everything that was possible to know has been known and it was seen that there is only being there is nothing to know so knowledge comes out to be simply dissolution of false beliefs dissolution of concepts dissolution of notions anything that was assumed believed they are all dropped and once you reach this state you can call it uh, equanimous state you can call it samadhi and uh, that that ends the path of knowledge it can happen in one hour if the student is ready silence can be achieved words will add to the ignorance and words usually show ignorance which is a good thing because if the student does not show their ignorance we'll assume that you have understood everything so yes everybody is most welcome to clear it up sometimes i'll answer from the any of these three levels and the answer will be such that it brings you back into silence usually the answer is completely meaningless it is it does not solve the question it shows that you are asking this question from this kind of ignorance and then there is no question and obviously there is no answer there is no need of any answer so if you feel that oh, i am not thinking from the emptiness i am thinking from something worldly or oh, it is my personal problem it is not an issue it is perfectly okay because ultimately you will be taken there so i have another question and um of course i'm i'm new to the program although i've been kind of thrashing around all over the place and 
this is my first uh, sort of uh, a systematic i was really excited i'm still excited about this whole systematic approach um but one of the things i think that's emphasized and i am yet to fully understand that and that is the need for for a teacher for a, of a guru right um and so far obviously i even though i I have not personally met um, what one would call a guru, obviously, you know, reviewing books and videos and so on and so forth. You know, there are many, many, many gurus who have influenced me. But I think the time is now where um, I feel like um, there is a need there is, a, there is some need i sense that need and uh, i'm wondering how one can go about it and what would be the next step for me to make a connection with um with the guru thank you it is completely a personal journey to find your guru my recommendation is finish the program this is the only one in this whole universe there is nothing else like this then you can start searching for your guru i don't think the guru will tell you anything more than you already know then it will become a personal kind of uh, matter for you it's kind of like and dislike not of need or necessity and uh, how to find it you will need to explore just like you find anything else any other person it will be like a love affair kind of thing it depends more on feelings compared to practical things so listen to whomever you like first this is the first phase because books are available videos are available probably you can visit the ashrams do the retreats and whatever the programs they arrange spend one or two years like this tasting the waters what kind of gurus are available what do they teach and uh, the formula is the one to whom you are attracted most and can form a personal bond will be your guru it is possible that you are attracted to somebody who lived thousand years ago possible but the relationship is not possible at least for a simple ordinary human it is possible that you are attracted to somebody who lives in another country some remote place but won't be able to meet won't be able to talk much and uh, that satisfaction will not be there that i have somebody whom i can call guru so you need to choose somebody who is available for you who takes interest in you who personally meets you with whom you can sit talk share ask questions so it is a very very personal thing having a guru a live guru fortunately on the path of knowledge the means of knowledge is not guru you must have already gone through that chapter where we discussed that why guru is not the means of knowledge but it is a means of something else probably fulfillment of some kind desires to meet the guru that is a good desire to have means of knowledge fortunately is your own direct experience your own intellect and then anybody who has that kind of art to point to the right thing point to the truth which you are yourself is useful on the path of knowledge to get the knowledge knowledge is very simple it happens quickly after that yes if there is any need for a personal kind of relation everybody should do it it is a very good undertaking however i always give preference to knowledge first you can say that is my habit if you are hungry you will not check the packet or you will not check the container whether it is gold or silver or plastic no you eat the food first same way if you are hungry for knowledge you will not really worry about who is teaching me where he lives what he does how he looks like whether he will want to meet me or not you you don't think about all these things simply take the knowledge and there can be only two reasons to meet a guru first knowledge did not happen the program failed something some doubts remained this path is not good i need some other paths kundalini yoga or etc etc then you will need to meet somebody else obviously and second reason can be 
that I want a personal relation with the Guru. I want a bond which can last for many lives. Some people have this kind of desire. Although all these desires will be sufficiently muted after the knowledge because ultimately the essence is one. That person whom you are going to meet, you are going to call is exactly you. There is, There are no two. There is no separation. You and me are one. If this realization becomes deeper, the desire to meet somebody as a body, mind, will be gone mostly and then it will become like a play. Let's find somebody. Right now, yes, it will look like that I must have a guru. I need to talk to my guru every day. The guru will advise me on all my worldly things, my everyday problems will be taken care of. He can advise me, he can guide me. So all these things will be uh, needed in the beginning. But fortunately on the path of knowledge, the seeker becomes self-sufficient, self-dependent. In summary, my advice will be simply focus on the program right now. Keep the uh, guru thing aside for at least one year and then the adventure will happen. Okay, Anurakta is saying, Whenever I am in Sakshi Bhava, I start to get bored. Feels boring, very monotonous. Why is like that? You are right. The everyday life is really boring, isn't it? It is just uh, your survival. Even if you have somebody interesting in your life, even if you have a family, mother, father who are very, very loving, after knowledge, what do you see in them? Complete ignorance. Although I am not saying they are bad people, no. By nature, they are very good. But however, the juice is missing from ordinary people. By ordinary, I mean those who are not in any kind of spiritual path, not only path of knowledge. Even people who are on the path of knowledge are mostly boring. They are so straightforward and logical like Mr. Spock. You don't want to talk to them much because th there is nothing much to talk also. So see that uh, the mundane world is boring. See that this dryness of the world and other people is made evident by your awareness. Sakshi Bhava means awareness in English. Probably you should use the English words. In awareness, it is revealed that uh, the sensory world and other people are mostly meaningless. That is the feeling of boring, feeling of getting bored you are talking about. There is nothing much there. What is not boring? The answer is very simple. You, your essence is most interesting. It, we call it bliss. Although it is not a party all night kind of bliss. Yes, it is peace, silence. Are you getting bored of being what you are? Or is the experiencer bored? And you will see no, it is bliss. That which is bored is the mind. And because the knowledge has revealed that whatever it was thinking as interesting is completely meaningless. I don't know. Some people still have hobbies and all these things. They do dance and uh, enjoy. Nothing wrong in that. But sometimes we get this feeling of emptiness, complete meaninglessness in the worldly matters. So... I have a good news that it is a sign of progress. Spirituality begins at boredom. Philosophy starts there. If you found the world interesting, if you found these people interesting, you will not progress in spirituality. That is called a worldly kind of person. Now, if the progress has happened, what will you find interesting? Spirituality, knowledge. These kind of discussions, meetings, your guru, most probably, he is not boring, hopefully. And uh, uh, books, material like this, songs, music and spiritual people. They are probably slightly interesting than non-spiritual worldly people. So, my advice will be to give up the old. It is boring, yes. Give up the old, take up something new which is more meaningful for you. Where there is juice which you love most, start exploring in the other field. And it has to be connected to spirituality, otherwise it becomes boring <laughs> very quickly. So it is a sign of progress according to me. You will need to change the old ways. They will not remain attractive for you if the progress is happening. Sometimes the progress happens very fast. It happens in a jump and then everything is worthless, meaningless. Nothing makes any sense. Nothing attracts your at attention. And there is a technical name for this. It is called detachment. Viragya Virakti in Sanskrit. 
that is a big sign of progress as you know in spirituality everything is reversed it's reverse of materiality or worldly things so not taking interest in the world guru will say wow you are progressing now finally you have dropped that trash can which which is called world so i think boredom is a state between complete chaos violence of the world to complete bliss and peace of spirituality the middle portion sounds boring because uh, you have left the old you are leaving the old probably it is no more attractive but you have not taken the new find your purpose in the new new is the truth that you came to know see what can be done there see how to keep this mind and body engaged there look what i am doing isn't the world boring for me yes completely but this mind body cannot sit like this like a stone it needs to do something it needs some kind of pleasure or happiness by doing something so we cannot make it like like a rock we can simply turn its direction to something more positive some something more higher although we cannot call it higher there's nothing higher and lower but uh, some bigger goals now you will need to readjust to the new situation and i have seen that uh, mostly people turn to service they start serving others i i don't know whether it is enjoyable or not but it is adventurous yes like action movie where there are spies and there is a villain and there is chase so on and this illusion is uh, endless so just find uh, something which the mind likes there is a lot of potential here so i am doing my own adventure and it is beneficial to others also that gives me pleasure i don't know how beneficial it is to me it is beneficial in a way that it uh, i don't need to practice awareness you guys are sufficient to keep me aware your emails your reviews your satsang your messages they don't let me fall into darkness i can say that is the selfish reason to serve it is not exactly selfish because somebody else is being benefited but this creature is also benefited so make your life spiritual you will not get bored and you will not need to do any practice separately the whole 24 hour is your practice now so turn it into an adventure that is what many people do kapil is saying my personal experience is books videos which provided information but didn't make it real it required pointers by guru to make it real exactly that is my experience and probably that will be the experience of many many seekers except a few brilliant seekers you need to keep the book or video in front of them and they understand it completely no questions remain how is that possible we don't know but we come up with a theory that they have already done their practice or seeking in previous lives nobody believes these things but satisfy our mind by saying like this there are some brilliant people however 99.9% of uh, seekers they need a guru they need uh, somebody to point it out somebody who has already understood it and that is very natural because to learn anything new you need assistance of somebody even to uh, even if when you learn to walk you need to hold the hand of your mother or father you need a support when you learn to talk you need to copy somebody when you read and write and learn 1 2 3 4 counting you need a teacher so yes if you are absolutely new and not some kind of uh, uh, saint who is reborn by mistake here you will need a guru the books will be written by guru obviously otherwise why will you read it the videos will talk about the guru or will be produced by the guru and uh, there is a limitation there because you cannot ask a question and the book will not judge you all the guru will not also judge you but the guru will say you did not understand what i said i know by the way you are behaving or by the way you are questioning first understand this thing the book will not do this book book will not uh, put you under this pressure to know oh i read the book it was very nice then next book i saw the video 5 minutes all knowledge was there next video so it does not make you progress although it it is very inspiring books are very inspiring probably many of us start from book because the gurus are in this world unreachable especially the big gurus 
and uh, an ordinary person a new seeker never accepts any ordinary guru as their guru because they have so much romantic ideas about gurus they will be heavenly and kind and like a god with miracle powers so uh, the person who is sitting beside you will be your guru but you will not know it initially in the beginning so a successful guru is the one who does a lot of advertising i'll do this i'll cure this i'll do that i'll send you to heaven and then these newcomers approach and uh, teaching happens the pointing happens and the guru says i am also like you <laughs> i am also ordinary it was all a drama to attract your attention there are very good means of knowledge however they do not answer nowadays the books can talk yes they can answer some things like we have made our own arrangement of gcr however they will get stuck at some point because their knowledge is simply something which is already fed into them they do not learn right now at least but in few years uh, you will get these systems which will teach you something then you can say goodbye to the human guru <laughs> there is no need of them anymore Neelam is saying there is a feeling that I am in love, but not towards anyone or anything particular. It is just being in love. What kind of state is this? We have a name for this state. It is called devotion. The devotional energies are active in you. Now, you, if you want, you can. I can make it more fancy. That it is opening of the heart center. It is called the Anahat Chakra in Sanskrit. That will produce this kind of feeling. why is there an opening because the nectar of knowledge is now dripping into other centers of the mind remember these are not body these are not physical things just like love is not physical thing so all i can say is in my terminology which is very dry and uh, boring that your purification has started and i'll tell you more boring stuff that it will not last all these feelings they come and go many people are very happy to accept this thing this phenomena passing phenomena as opening of this chakra or that chakra about which i have no complaint simply do not assume that it is true do not assume that it is really happening it is a good thing yes just like you are feeling love and all that there are many people who will feel exactly the opposite like she said i am feeling it's everything is boring yeah that is the uh, activation of vishuddhi it needs more it needs more fuel it needs more adventure i could have told her that this is your vishuddhi activated but then people get scared what what is that so in our ordinary language we say purification has started it will produce some kind of symptoms sometimes they are very bad because if you are in activated heart center all the bad feeling will become 10 times anybody says something bad to you it will feel Hundred times worse. So that's why we need to stabilize here. We need to balance it, and we say it is simply purification. Nothing big is happening. That does not make it something extraordinary. That does not make your mind attached to it. Remember, it is not going to last. It will go away. So already the attachment will be removed. Yes, you can enjoy. There is no harm. Do not assume it is true. Do not assume it is permanent. do not assume that this is the most significant thing achievement no there is nothing to achieve these are now symptoms side effects there will be many as long as there is this body mind some some kind of purification will keep happening there it is happening in me also me means this thing this body mind so keep writing it down keep reporting hopefully that will speed up this process of purification so for those who are thinking why nothing is happening to me there can be two possibilities here first is that don't worry nothing is impure in you so nothing no symptoms is showing no impurity is there so nothing is changing we are talking about mind only because everything is mind only symptoms show up in body sometimes second possibility is you, it has not started you are still beginning who knows the purification will start and the good news is whether it starts or not we start it we initiate it and that is your step number 6 in the program Anurakta is saying, "Have read unveiled mysteries and magic presence." I don't know. Are these the names of some books or something? 
but i have read so much anvil mysteries and magic things that uh, there is no limit of it countless books but if you want to send me if you have it do it if you think i should read it the thing is this whole life has become a magic presence and mystery for me the books seem to be boring but anyway i keep reading all these things and as you know we have started one program specially for this kind of things to unveil the mysteries and to produce the magic that is called tantra bodhi karish is saying if ignorance has been removed at what point is abiding completed knowing that there is only just being can just being lead to yog maya what is yog maya i mean i know yog and i know maya but you join them probably it comes from some other path so let me know but at what point is abiding completed when it becomes your nature when there is no force or effort to abide you can say that uh, i don't have any ignorance now i don't have any impurity now then you don't even think about abiding it is like driving the car at what point have you learned to drive the car when you don't need to think about it when it happens automatically and it is a pleasing experience pleasant experience you say i know completely how to drive i don't have any fear or hesitation and so on i know the map i know the roads at that point your driving is complete driving lesson is complete so when there there are no doubts what is abiding how to abide what to do what not to do at that point it is done and then it happens automatically you don't have to do it why because it is not a job it is not an activity abiding is simply being what you are or you can say not being what you are not that takes effort isn't it because the worldly situations will force you into uh, acting as a body mind which is perfectly okay but doing it in a background of understanding and presence and awareness when it happens effortlessly you don't forget always you know you can forget sometimes it's no problem at all but you don't forget who you are mostly at that point it is complete so knowing that there is only just being it is all empty now here nothing more is there that is the start of abiding it starts like this and what happens in the end same thing but now it is continuous it is effortless my recommendation is not to get into other philosophies and uh, other terminology use our terminology it is complete we don't need extra words actually i want to remove the words from whatever is already there in program like you can see right now emptiness zero nothing etc etc it causes confusion too many words you take one word define it precisely that solidities that causes less confusion but sometimes they become very monotonous same word repeating again and again so we introduce some kind of poetry but it's okay as long as you define it when will it happen that you are effortlessly abiding there is no formula and there is no rule because it totally depends on uh, the individual the mind what is the content of the mind some people take a long time because they have more impurities some people are from day one it is like any sport any game any art so practice once you forget that you are practicing it is done remember that there are no practices on the path of knowledge all these practices are given for your entertainment because you want to practice something it is given there is only just being right now also probably this creature is not satisfied with this simply simply city it is so simple this moment is whole and complete nothing can be added nothing can be removed but being a human we are not happy with this situation we want something and so the practice enters when you get bored with the practice yes it is done if i practice it is just being all one and perfect if i practice same if i don't practice exactly same it totally depends on your interest when do you want to complete it today also it is possible <laughs> if you stop thinking that it is necessary but yes i know it is necessary because the ignorance remains a little bit the mind finds a way to go back in ignorance mind has this amusing capability to always forget does not matter who said it does not matter whether what was your experience does not matter whether if you got the whole and complete evidence next day it is back in darkness 
we need something yes practical nildar is asking many times i find myself trying to forget myself but that goes into endless loop very frustrating the one who tries to forget himself is reinforcing himself what to do the first thing is not to do anything unless it is prescribed by your guru a pointless practice a pointless kind of meditation which is simply assumed by a stu- student i need to do this nobody told him the the path of the student has nothing like this nobody recommended this so you can see that uh, doing this or doing anything at all comes from ignorance and that which comes from ignorance is frustrating yes fails so what to do follow the path choose a path of your liking something which you love dedicate yourself discipline your mind that i will not do anything which i simply imagined or assumed i'll follow the path i'll walk on the footprints of people who have followed it for thousands of years i'll see for 2 3 4 years what happens what practices are fruitful i learn first then do this is called a student this is called a seeker if you all really know what is good for me how to do it what is what is the practice in my path then uh, you are not a student you are a guru because you are doing it yourself nobody needs to tell you what to do so it is very common that newcomers they read it somewhere or they simply listen to half cooked lecture somewhere and they form a practice out of it i heard this great guru he was telling me to forget everything including yourself now i must do it this is not really a practice it is a waste of time so if you think path of knowledge is for me the only practice here is to remember not to forget remember who you are and don't worry we tell you how to do that in step number 4 so my recommendation is always to do one thing not try 100 things at a time you can go back to forget myself practice after the program no problem probably you will find a guru who can teach you how to do that the practice on the path of knowledge is remember who you are that does not mean this ego or the person or body mind remember you are not that and remember your true nature that is the practice how to do that it is not required right now this is step number 4 where where you will reach only when you pass the exam how will you pass the exam if you have good enough knowledge of the whatever you heard is true for you only then you will pass the exam the exam means at least 50% marks are needed to pass which means half knowledge is also okay so right now the step requires you to go through the lectures go through your notes verify them verification means is this really true are these simply theories fantasies or somebody is repeating something which was written in some book or is it really true is it really like this apply your own direct experience and logic because you were given these means of knowledge now instead of worrying about this practice or that practice start verifying the teaching and if you cannot verify anything come in the meeting ask me ask people here probably sometimes i am not available and uh, if you cannot verify majority of it, it it does not matter if you can very if you cannot verify a few small things here and there like the ignorance causes this or ignorance causes disease you don't find it very convincing no problem but the essential knowledge if you can verify it the path is open then the practices will be given which are many thousand years old everybody has tried those things they are not cooked by myself and uh, if you cannot verify the basic knowledge essential knowledge this program is completely useless now no practice will work no teaching will work because the verification failed it is not true you won't be able to keep doing it because it's not true at that time you will need to find another path another guru another uh, goal spiritual goal or oh, the knowledge is something which is completely fantasy there is no self there is nothing like this no atman no brahman so let me find something else and that changes your path so at this point verification is needed how to do it that is told in the program what are the means of knowledge the whole uh, program is demonstration of means of knowledge it does not teach you anything really it shows you how to apply the means of knowledge now 
and get your own knowledge. Like he said, little bit of pointing is given here and there. Look, this is how we apply the knowledge. This is how we apply the logic. This is the meaning of this word. And uh, when that is done, you have verified, we have, you have tested the knowledge, then we test you. Have you really tested it or you have blindly believed it? Because blind belief is uh, a problem on the path of knowledge. It does not produce any effect. Ignorance is still there. So I need to make sure a little bit, although I am not 100% sure. And uh, the rest of the testing will be done by your own life. Life is a test only, it is an exam only of your knowledge. So what to do? It's very easy. Continue in the program. He's saying, I have verified the lessons, but I feel a bit intimidated by the prospect of them. So there is nothing to worry. Uh, you can do practices. There is a link on the step number three, which will take you to the knowledge quiz. It is just a quiz. There are hundreds of questions there. You can practice it. Go through the old questions, try to answer them and uh, take help of somebody who has already done this. Because yes, we have never done this kind of thing. This is the first time. We know how to answer the worldly questions. That is what your school has taught. But nobody has this experience of uh, passing a spiritual exam. Probably this is the most important test, but uh, it is not so difficult. If you have verified, then the answers need not be remembered. You don't need to recall the answer. The answer will be in front of you. If you have verified that it is daytime for you and somebody asks you, is it day or night? Do you need to recall? Do you need to recall what was in my program? What was written in that book? Who said what about day and night? No. You look out of the window, sun is shining. You say it is day because you verified it. It is your knowledge. So we usually give one month for verification and preparation, but uh, you can take more, more time and practice. Practice in front of the mirror or camera. Although here nobody is facing you, you are on your own. Nobody listens to these things, although we publish it. So there is nothing to be afraid. What will happen if you fail in the exam? Will your knowledge disappear? No. Knowledge is more important, not the exam. It is not important that you can answer each and everything under the sky. It is not possible and it is not required. What is required? Have you achieved these three kinds of knowledge? Self-knowledge, illusion and oneness? Is there, is there no doubt in your mind about these things? Then the program is done. The rest of the formalities are useless. Why is there an exam then? I don't want people to waste their time if they have not understood anything in the program. I don't want them to uh, practice anything or do purification without my, no my knowing. So the test is for me, actually. I want to make sure that uh, they can handle all these things which are coming. And the step number seven is just like uh, preparation for service, teacher's training, you can say. If somebody has this kind of motivation or desire to teach others, I don't want to put somebody in that position without knowing whether he knows or not, he or she. So very simple test is given. You can say it is also a formality. The real thing is already happened, which is your knowledge. If you fail to verify it, nothing is needed. Yes, it is perfectly fine. And there are no consequences of failure. If you fail, there is not much consequence. Many people don't appear in exam. Actually, I know this thing. So hopefully today's questions are over. So we can end our meeting here. And uh, if there are more, I'll come back next week, same time, Saturday, 8 India time, 8 p.m. And uh, thank you everybody for attending today's meeting. I'll see you next time.